Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're doing more Taylor Swift. Cannot wait. Um, a lot of you found me, I think, through my last reaction to Dear John, um, which was an incredible song. I learned a lot from the comments. Uh, one of my Patreons, Tall, who's always been a huge supporter of the channel, shout out to Tall, uh, wanted me to do Long Live. And so he spliced together a video here with some interviews ahead of time, I think. Um, so this will be kind of like a comprehensive look at this song, hopefully. Um, just a reminder, if you're not subscribed and you just found me, please consider doing so. It helps the channel grow. Um, I'm a pretty brand new reactor and that's the best way to support me. I have a Patreon if you'd like to support me that way too. Um, and a Discord where we chat about T-Swift. So go check out all those links in my bio. And without further ado, let's get into this. Thank you again, Tom. In Nashville who are gorgeous and have amazing voices yes. and want to do the same thing that I wanted to do and I had to figure out a way to stand out. Yep, you did. And for me, I went back home and I started playing a guitar and writing my own music and in that sense, I could walk into a room and play my own instrument and I could play songs that I'd written and that way I wouldn't have to depend on anybody creatively. You play a 12 string guitar? I do actually. No artist I've ever written with in my career has contributed more of the actual song than Taylor Swift to a writing session. Taylor contributed so much so quickly that for the first time and only time I actually felt bad for my share. I was like, God, I don't even know if I, des if I earned what I did. <laughs> She'll send you a voice memo the night before saying, so I just sat down and I was thinking, so and she's literally talking on the voice memo like this. And I was thinking maybe something kind of like this. Welcome to New York. It's been waiting for you. You know, she literally goes into the song, and I'm like, I write back, what do you mean something like? Like, that? that's the whole song. Right, you know? Right. Where they apparently sit in a room and people write songs for them. And I didn't want that to be, I didn't want that to be what people thought about me. See, I remember this era of Taylor Swift. Um, this is kind of like the last time I really, before this year, really had, like, even thought of her in that regard. Like I knew she blew up on the country scene and she was a, apparently an incredibly hard worker, right? Um, age 17, I can't even imagine just like having that kind of drive, not the drive, I can imagine that, but like having that kind of talent and ability to just walk in a room and own that room with like, you know, very established writers and producers and just pedal to the metal, right? Born to be a star, I guess. So I treated it like I was a 35-year-old songwriter writing every day like it was my job because I wanted to prove to people that that was what I really was serious about. So I would go in after school every single day and go and write with all these amazing co-writers and just really wanted to get it known around town that I didn't, I did, I, did, I wrote songs, I like right. really wrote them. <laughs> so um, a lot of the time people ask me what inspires me to write songs. And, and you know, a lot of the time, uh, people who don't know me will sort of uh, try and sum up my music and simplify it by saying, like, oh, Taylor Swift just writes songs about boys and breakups. So, like, like don't talk to her, bro. Like, she'll write a song about it. <laughs> so, that is. I mean, honestly, that was my impression. And um, as someone that's discovered her, Basically, for the first time, I'm so amazed by her her uh, poeticism and her ability to just like create these packaged lyrics that like do a, such a good job at identifying with pretty much a whole range of people, right? And it's obviously not just about boys. Like she has a wide scope of topics, uh, very deep mental health topics. Um, I'm like very, very into seeing her songwriting process and how she comes up with these ideas, but also how she finds the right words. Um, that's my impression of like a, like a, I don't know, like a lazy journalist. Anyway. <laughs> that I write songs about things that I find to be romantic and magical. And uh, 
To expand on that, I would like to say that I think so many things other than boys and breakups are romantic and magical. I think that, I think that loneliness can be romantic. I think walking through a city you've never been to before can be romantic. I think being on your own and being happy can be romantic. After that, I had a lot of people who would say, oh, she's an 18-year-old girl. There's no way that she actually carried her weight in those writing sessions. And that was a really harsh criticism, I felt, because, you know, there was no way I could prove them wrong other than to write my entire next record solo. So that's what I did. Damn. Speak now, okay. So this is, is this where Dear John came from? Um, it was like, yeah, age 21. I, I could be wrong on that, but uh, this is like her solo work where she literally was like, all right, I don't need any of the people around me collaborating, right? I can do this on my own. And here are my chops, right? This last album, Speak Now, was inspired by a lot of things um, that happened to me in my life. But one thing that inspired a song was um, we went on our very first headlining tour a few years ago. And I used to stand there before I would go on stage and I'd listen to the crowd making the most amazing, magical, loud screaming sounds. Imagine that feeling of just the adoration of like millions of fans just like screaming at you. Well, probably like in this case, whatever size the crowd this is, but like in general, like she has such a broad audience. Um, and I've noticed that even in the comments you guys have been leaving for me, like wide range demographically. It's so cool. That is exactly the sound I'm talking about. I hear it, and I, first of all, I, I, I would sit there and think, I can't believe I get to hear that sound one time in my life. And, um, and then I would get a melody stuck in my head. Um, and I could never get this melody out of my head until I finally wrote it into a song, and um, I called that song Long Live. Thank you so Here's much that. for screaming for us. This song is so completely 100% for you. slow rhythmic build up here um, and I have to say this every live performance that I see her but like it's flawless like there's no there's no need for enhancement auto-tune whatever it might be like her voice is just people apparently there's a criticism that Taylor can't sing that's BS that's completely BS she has a wide range and from what I've seen live there's no qualms in her voice. Like, it's just what you get is what you also get on the record, which I really appreciate. I love artists that are able to channel that. So, so far, I mean, I think this is base layer about, you know, her fandom, right? And it's a tribute to them. Long live, right? Uh, what we've created together here as we brought out, as they shouted her name. Um, maybe there's more behind it, though.
So is she referring to like bring on all the pretenders, like all the fakes in the industry, but what we've created here is actually real and long live. Um, the moment where I come out on stage and I feel like the reverberations in the crowd and like, this is real. Like, look at, look at what she's done. Look at what she's created. This is organic. Um, nothing like all the, the fake BS that's, you know, compiled in the industry. Or so real. <laughs> Your baseball cap for a crown When they gave us some trophies And we held them up for our town And the cynics were out of race Screaming this is absurd Okay, yeah, so I do think this is about all of the the resistance there was to Taylor crashing through on the scene originally, right? And all the people that said it was absolutely absurd and BS and like she, you know, didn't have anything more than just a couple of pop hits in her and here she is, you know, creating a whole new era, creating a whole new age as she says um, and she's she's conquering it. Right? She's created a lane for herself and she's remained relevant for what decade? Over a decade at this point, more than that. So um, this has to be so satisfying to be in the crowd and Taylor just like sharing this kind of like, yes, we created something very real together. so happy we have absolutely loved spending time in your town and you have been so amazing to us i mean you guys know every single word and you've danced this entire night and it means the world to me and every single person you see on stage thank you can really see the genuineness and she looks so happy. Ah, this is a cool moment. Where is this filmed?
Oh man, that was awesome. That was awesome. What a performance. She's a performer, uh, but so much more than that, an artist. And I think this really just captured how much investment there is in her. Uh, investment there is from the fans in her. Um, and right back, you know, she obviously just like plays with the crowd so well. Um, that moment of coming to like a small town or a city and just like rocking people's worlds. Live concerts are so incredible in that way, right? Seeing someone you've really just gelled with your whole life and now they're finally in the same stadium or on the same stage and you're like 100 feet away. It's a truly magical experience. And that's what I got from this. Um, it felt intimate, even though it was a huge stadium, it felt intimate. Um, and that takes a special type of artist to be able to do that. Tall, thank you so much. Uh, you always pick the right Taylor Swift songs for me. So long live, um, long live the T-Swift. I guess that's what I have to say on this one here. I loved it. I got goosebumps a couple of times. Um, I'm going to try to keep uh, hitting Taylor Swift requests. Put them in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Subscribe if you haven't. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.